Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. What's the most dist- I was 19 and the first person to pass an accident on a road a mile from my house at around 10.30 p.m. I pulled over and went back to check on the person in the car. It was a middle-aged woman in the driver's seat with her head roughly three-fourths decapitated. I vomited on the spot, then called 911. The operator asked if they needed an ambulance. When I responded no she's already dead they asked if I checked for a pulse. I told them no and they asked how I knew she was dead. Telling them her head was barely attached to her neck was enough info for them to send police and I think the coroner, I left before the coroner arrived. One officer told me that it was the worst victim he had ever seen. I still occasionally have nightmare flashbacks and it's been over a decade. My mother passed away from what we think were complications related to lupus. I watched her go from the strong woman I loved to a shell. She had sores all over her body and they were covered in band-aids because she couldn't stop scratching them. She couldn't get out of bed or walk by herself because the pain in her legs was so bad. She was terrified, and the last time I saw her, I held her while she cried in my arms repeating I don't want to die over and over again. It broke my heart, and a week later she died. She had fallen out of bed and was in too much pain to get back in it, so she died alone on the floor of her room. My strong, beautiful mother lived her last moments alone, scared, and in pain. Because of this, the most disturbing thing I've ever seen was her corpse laying on the floor, still wearing her favorite pajamas. I miss her so much. Edited to add, thank you very much to those who chose to give me an award, and thank you to everyone who sent their love. To those who have or know people who have lupus, and those who have also lost someone they love, I'm so sorry and I wish you all the best. All I can say is that life can be cut short in an instant, so make sure that the people you love know how much you care about them. Take care, everyone. More unsettling than shocking on the disturbing spectrum. Saw a guy from work trip while exercising, running backward, warming up. Hit his head on the ground and went unconscious. NBD right? He never woke up and died after being in a coma for years. Had a wife and kids. Fireworks accident. Back in the 90s, all you could legally acquire here were tiny firecrackers with a fuse. The really heavy stuff, like nitrate crackers and cobras wasn't really around yet. What the cool kids did have were stridgkers. These were heavier firecrackers from Germany and Eastern Europe that didn't have a fuse, but a match head you had to strike to set them off. I think their official use is to scare birds away from crop fields. They were also notoriously unreliable in their timing. When I was eight or so, I watched a bunch of older kids playing with these. The bangs were pretty impressive. Then one of them struck one that went off almost immediately, right in his hand. It took off his middle three fingers, just like that. It's not so much the gore that stuck with me, it's the look of surprise on his face melting into sadness and despair. He didn't even scream with pain at first. He just started crying mournfully at the realization of what had just happened. It was only when his mother got there that, I assume, the pain hit him like a ton of bricks and he started screaming. I'll never forget the look on his face though. Poor kid. When I was young my family drove past a stopped car. The driver was sitting sort of reclined in his seat, driver's side door open, and he was just lifeless. It was weird. The other passengers weren't panicking so far as I could tell and I think there were paramedics there. Another time on the way to a cross-country meet our bus passed a horrific accident. The responders hadn't covered up a mostly decapitated driver yet and a bus full of middle and high school students got the drive-by view. Damn. I saw a man die. He was riding a motorcycle a few cars ahead of me and I watched as a truck pulled out in front of him and he t-boned the bed and went flying. This was in Arizona where there are no helmet laws. He flew through the air, 
bounced on the ground and landed on his face and slid along the asphalt a good 30 feet. The slide took away all the skin on his face and all you could see through all the blood were his eyes and his teeth. My father died, alone on a leather couch in Los Angeles and wasn't found for a couple of weeks. When the paramedics found him they just removed his body. My sister and I had to break into his apartment to clean it out and the couch had parts of his scalp stuck to it, I guess because he was on there for so long. Super disturbing. When I was about 7 years old in the Philippines, while I was on my way to buy snacks from the convenience store. I saw my auntie but she quickly dragged me home. Everyone on the street seemed to be running for their lives. It turns out, a murder just occurred and the killer was on the loose. I peeked outside to see the killer shirtless and bloody all over. His eyes were wide open and he was carrying a machete. He was walking down the street and it was a pretty horrific thing for seven-year-old me to see. Watched my dad die for like an hour as his lungs solidified and he chalked on them then watched the color leave his skin still here it sometimes when I can't sleep I should add that it was from lung cancer and the treatment of the lung cancer but I'm not sure exactly what it was called when his lungs solidified we were also vacuuming his lungs multiple times a day. My dad took his life and unfortunately I found him. His body was decomposing in his place with the heater on for four days. It wasn't a pretty sight. It hasn't quite been a year yet and I still replay finding him in my mind all of the time. It's been horrible. Played baseball in high school and was on the varsity team. Our coach decided that instead of practice we would watch the C-squad, usually freshmen, play their game. We're all huddled up on on the left field fence cheering on these kids as they take the field. One of our favorite freshmen was playing at third base so we're giving him shit while the pitcher warms up. First batter is up and he absolutely smokes the pitch, line drive right to third base. The ball only hit face, he didn't react fast enough and had even moved into the field a little. Blood was everywhere, absolutely gushing from his mouth. He gets taken away in a hurry and someone goes over to grab his glove and hat that was left on the field. There was something else in the dirt and as they picked it up there was an instant reaction. It was his teeth, not individually fallen out or anything, no his entire upper gums with the teeth and all was just there on the ground in one piece. Never saw the kid again and no idea what happened. I hope he's okay. The Aftermath of a Suicide Dude shot himself in the driver's seat of his car. His parents were there and I remember seeing his mom in his passenger seat crying over his body. It was my first time seeing anything like that and that shit caused a physical pain in the chest. Saw the aftermath of a coyote getting hit by a truck. The poor thing was dragging its back legs, howling in pain trying to get away. I've never seen something so graphic in real life. The man who hit the coyote was in full panic mode, hands over his face, head, and squatting and sobbing. To put a gore-filled story short, imagine Slink from Toy Story. I've seen two people die up close before. Once literally was holding the woman's head in my hand slash lap when the nurse that was there started CPR and got her heart going as the ambulance got there. Threw up after that one. Few years later saw my mom pass out from airflow loss and fall forward while I was already on the phone with 911. Machines got turned off three days later, but I always think of that moment, her last moments of consciousness, as when she really died. I watched as my husband flatlined in the hospital. I remember staring at the monitor and it just happened. Earlier that day was when we were told that he was brain dead from several massive strokes. That wasn't the disturbing part, though. I climbed up on him when he was going and made them remove the breathing tube so I could kiss him one last time. I didn't know that his mouth would fill with blood after they removed it. I was saddled on him holding a saliva ejector one of those sucker tools they use to get out your spit when you are at the dentist. So here I am sucking blood out of his mouth and stroking his head telling him it's over. I don't know why. It's really disturbing to think back to that and that I kissed a dead body. Grief and shock does really weird things to a person. 
I lost my baby. Had a horrible miscarriage in the ER and nearly died. What they don't tell you with miscarriage is you literally deliver the fetus. It comes out. You see it. It was the most heartbreaking thing I have ever experienced and the images will be with me forever. Working in the personal injury field can be pretty awful. Worst was a guy who got crushed when an 18-wheeler tipped over and landed on his legs. He slowly bled out and he was stuck. The worst part was he was crying for his mom at the end. Can't say I wouldn't do the same. You think that's just a cliche but it's real. Watching my father-in-law die unexpectedly after getting his finger pricked by his fishing lure. He went out of town for an annual fishing trip and one day he was good and the next we were flying to another state to say our goodbyes. Watching someone die changes you, and listening to the death rattle is a sound you'll never get out of your head. For those interested, his lure had a bacteria called Vibrio and it basically ate his flesh from the inside out. I went onto a bad subreddit once out of curiosity, video of this woman on a road, wailing and crying, devastated. She's trying to gather something with her hands, it's hard to make out what it is, then I see a severed leg, a hand, someone close to her was run over by a truck. Unrecognizable remains. She's gathering the remains. A normal, healthy person I love went into psychosis. It's like nothing you have seen in the movies or read about. It's like someone takes over their body and you want to bring them back so badly. There is so very little help out there and you feel absolutely helpless. To look at someone who loves you and know that they can't recognize you is heartbreaking. I really believe I have PTSD from this event. BTW, this person is doing great right now. I am in therapy because of this and other trauma. And I have learned it is way more common than we think for a person to enter psychosis get better and never have another episode again. Sadly we still don't know enough about this. In real life? When my oldest sister was caught playing with matches in the backyard, my parents made her take a book of matches, light each one individually and hold onto it until it put itself out on her fingers. They made me and my other two sisters watch. I think my oldest sister was around 10 at the time. I remember how much she was screaming and pleading, promising she'd never do it again. Online. The cartel video where they forced a young boy to watch as they beheaded his father, then they proceeded to flay the boy's chest open and cut out his heart while he was still alive. The first time I saw my face in the mirror after I was in a car crash. Driver had dumbbells in the boot, they flew forward with the impact, one of which smashed me in the head. My face was like drop dead Fred after he puts it in the fridge. Had a huge hematoma so I knew it was swollen and big cause I felt the weight of it but wasn't prepared for the reality. Fully recovered and no residual issues though. Watching my ex-girlfriend's mother die, well not her actual death but my ex's reaction. Screaming crying mommy. Mommy over and over in a panic. It still echoes in my head. I've seen too many horrific things in my life, suicide aftermath from gunshots, hangings with a jump rope, motorcycle crashes where flesh was skinned off victims sliding 350 feet down a highway, but the sounds of my ex had to be the worst. I guess it's because it's more personal and she was all she had. I used to work supply in about a 400 bed hospital. I was the emergency department restocker. The kinds of injuries you see in that kind of place were sometimes jaw-dropping. Two in particular stand out in my mind. The first, I was walking past one of the trauma bays, and there was a man sitting in a chair, which was a little strange. People tend to be in gurneys, not chairs. The chair he was sitting in had the armrests almost all the way up to his armpits, they were adjustable and typically used for stabilizing an arm for drawing blood, etc. His right arm was sitting on the arm rest, then just past the elbow the arm took a sharp 90 degree downward turn. Then about 3 inches past that, his arm took another 90 degree turn back forward, where his hand was resting on an adjustable metal tray. The second injury, I didn't actually see, 
but I do remember hearing that the person had been in a car crash. There was an absolute flurry of people flying around the person on the gurney, nurses, doctors, EMTs all doing what they can, so I could not see the person directly. But at some point, someone either let go of something or lost their grip, I don't even know. But blood sprayed across about half the people in the room, on the walls, on the adjustable lights hanging from the ceiling, all over. It was absolutely insane. I remember going back the next day and the kind old man, who they hired simply to always be walking around the hospital with a cart of paint and paintbrushes to cover up any nicks or blemishes on the walls around the facility, was painting over the blood stains on the walls in that particular trauma bay. Watched one of my students become a quadriplegic, he was 16 and it was a crazy winter sports accident. I was a dorm dad at a boarding school and he was one of the students I watched over slash advised. Not blood and gore, I'll never forget the sound of his impact on the icy snow. I'll never forget medics tapping his shins and asking him if he could feel it and him saying no. I'll never forget how fucking scared his face looked the whole time even as the painkiller kicked in. Fantastic kid, the kinda teenager you would describe as a lovable shithead, trying so hard to get it right and falling short as often as he succeeded. At one point I remember we were sitting playing FIFA while he chatted about his world. He paused the game abruptly mid-story, looked at me and said bro, I have so many hormones right now. He's a grown-up now, graduated college and all that. Haven't talked to him in a while but now that's on my list. Also yes, internet. I do have an amazing support system that's helped me process it. My B if the description did not show that. Some Brazilian kid tried to jump off a cliff and landed on the rock bank on his face and it literally split his entire head and face half while he was still awake. I'm sure other people have seen this VID. So fucked up I was not even expecting that at all, sad face. A tie of when my cousin after visiting his mother his face was just blank. He took a knife from the kitchen and attempted to disembowel himself with it, his dad and my mom trying to stop him, he tried to cut his own throat. I just remember crying and begging him not to die. Two years later finding my sister attempted to as well but with her wrists and ankles. My dad picking up my sister and running out of the house with her. My mom just in shock kind of just wandered off. I remember going up to my grandma's apartment and knocking on her door and crying and falling asleep on her couch watch will or fortune. I still cannot stand the color red. Funny thing is the first thing that pops into my head is stuff I've seen online. Realistically it was finding my dad after he'd passed away from a heart attack, tried to revive him with CPR. Not cold but not nearly as warm as you should be. Having my mom see him like that laying in the yard has to be just as bad, but honestly it all kind of blurs together. I'd say it fucks with me but it's more on an unconscious level. Luckily I handled it better than I thought I would and I had a good support system at the time. I wasn't as developed as an adult as I should have been at that age and that helped wake me up to the harsh realities of life. Married now, wish he could have met her. Covered in tattoos, he'd probably end up the way I found him last time if he saw me now. All jokes aside I really miss him, I have a gut feeling we'll meet again, and if not, he'll guess I'll be gone and won't know any better. Best wishes y'all, this thread is rough. I clean up crime scenes and similar for a living. A very obese man with a chronic disease, lived alone with no family or support system. Ill, homebound, immobile in an easy chair, maybe knew he was dying soon. Ordered Chinese delivery his last days, used the empty containers for his urine and feces, stacked them around the chair on the floor, coffee table, TV, end table, TV tray, etc. Maybe 100 containers in all. Ultimately, he died in that chair, liquefied, and the fluids pooled in his lower extremities, swelled and blew out his feet and formed a puddle on the tile floor, with this whole scene in the center of it. Looked like some sort of end times altar or sacrifice of sorts. In person? I saw the aftermath of a nasty car crash off the side of the highway once. 
it was a minivan that had managed to flip onto its roof. Multiple occupants had been ejected from the vehicle and it looked like they were dead. There was a lot of blood and the way they were positioned screamed, I'm dead. It was in the middle of the night on a dark stretch of road. It seemed as if the crash had just happened since there weren't any first responders around. There was just a wrecked vehicle and the bodies. I was a child at the time and I saw all of this from the passenger side window of my dad's SUV. He slowed down as we drove by the scene because there were pieces of debris in the road that he had to maneuver around. We didn't stop however and my dad didn't call the authorities to let them know what had happened. I had been half asleep when we drove up on the wreck, but I was awake enough to take in what I was seeing. I closed my eyes and tried to convince myself that it was a bad dream, but deep down I knew it was real. Before cell phones. Rumi and I lounging with TV and heard a loud boom. Ran outside and a car had crashed into a fire hydrant at the end of the block and burst into flames. We didn't have a phone I screamed for Rumi to get the neighbors to call 911 and I started running. I began hearing screams but before I could get there a guy in a VW bus stopped, jerked the door of the car open and dragged the driver to the far curb. By the time I got there the angel had got back in his van and drove away. The driver was shaken and singed but awake and crying. I've been afraid of dying in a fire ever since. Growing up with both parents being drug addicts I saw too much and it has definitely made me the person I am today. One memory was my parents were on a particular long and horrible bender. They locked themselves in their bedroom for days on end. I was left to care for myself and siblings alone. We were starving and had no food. I called a family friend crying. He immediately came and broke down the door. What I saw scarred me forever. Blood all over the walls and ceiling due to them using needles and it covered everything. They looked like zombies and the smell was so disgusting coming from them and the entire room. They had not bathed or even left the room and were just sweating in their filth. They were smoking it as well and burned marks in the carpet, table, and bed. I'm surprised we didn't have a house fire. They were in such a panic state and fighting the friend I called as he had broke the door down. He yelled to me to take the drugs and toss them while he held them both back. They were fiends and screaming as I grabbed it all. I ran to the toilet to flush it all. My mother grabbed me and pinned me against the wall pounding me. She was so strong she could have killed me. The friend got away from my father and took her off of me. He hit her and I got away. Traumatized, emotionally stunned, I don't remember how I gathered myself to be strong for my little brother and sister but I did. We sat in the living room huddled together under a blanket and cried so much. I'm proud to say all three of us have never touched any illegal substances growing up and into adulthood. We are so traumatized by seeing the effects of what drug use can do to your body, mind, and your loved ones. I turned it into something positive as substance abuse and mental health are my strong fields and I have made a career from it. My father ultimately passed away from a heroin overdose in 2004. He died at home and of course we witnessed that too. He was a great man and growing up he pressed us to continue our education to better ourselves. He always said to me that he wished he could do better for us and hoped that seeing them struggle with addiction will deter us from following the path they did. I hope he sees and is proud. Car accident I was in back in 2007. Guy ran a red light running from police. I was in a lifted truck. I ran clear over his car he was doing 80 miles per hour I was doing 30. Peeled the roof off his car. His head was in his lap hanging on by a thread of flesh. I work in veterinary medicine, specifically ER, so I've seen some shit literally and figuratively. While it's not the most messed up, it's something I keep thinking about. I was the tech for a senior Yorkie that presented for GI upset. He looked like it had been a while since he had been groomed, nothing too crazy, no major mats. But on his face he had the largest, hardest clumps of eye discharge I've ever seen. Like almost sealed his eye shut, pulling at his skin so badly it was causing irritation. 
It was so close to his skin I was afraid to use scissors or clippers so I had to slowly work at it with my bare hands. He was so sweet and sat so still, I was so baffled as to how his owner could let it get so bad. It honestly made me really angry to see him neglected like that. I hope he's doing okay. Watched a co-worker, a crane operator, spotting another crane operator that was moving a large pipe. The pipe swung around and pinned the spotter, crushing the middle of his body. His blood and guts came out his bottom, and more blood out of his mouth. Three things I'll never forget, his expression, the smell, and to always be mindful of surroundings, a pinch point could end you easily. Dead teenager getting ignored on the sidewalk in the French Quarter in New Orleans. One evening, right before dusk, I was walking to work from the bus. On Canal Street, which was very busy in regards to foot traffic, right before you get to the Walgreens, there was a dead teenager laying face up on the sidewalk. Very visible. Nothing to obscure him from anyone's view. It wasn't that he was dead that made it my choice for this answer. It was everyone ignoring him. Walking by or over someone's dead child. One of his shoes was in the street, and he was laying perfectly flat, so someone moved him after he was either hit by a car or possibly stabbed in the back. This was during the final big week of Mardi Gras, so there were tourists everywhere in addition to locals. They were more interested in getting to Bourbon Street to get drunk ER than pausing to see if someone's young teenager was okay. You couldn't tell he was dead unless you really paid attention, otherwise you would have thought he was just passed out. Even still, he looked about 14 slash 15, you stop. This wasn't just another passed out drunk tourist or homeless guy, this was a child. For anyone who needs it, trauma therapy exists. The following modalities are helpful to know about, sensorimotor psychotherapy. Internal Family Systems EMDR Somatic Experiencing NARM Brain Spotting Trauma Focused CBT If you have ongoing symptoms of PTSD after witnessing something awful, consider seeking help. It's possible to heal and live well after trauma. Used to be into riding motorcycles. Watched a buddy of mine lose control and hit a pole. His helmet must have caught on something because it literally ripped his head from his body. Had to drag his headless body away from the road so cars wouldn't run over it. Still have nightmares about it years later. I was in a car accident in which I was the driver, my girlfriend was the passenger and we were T-boned slash hit on her passenger side door. Immediately after the accident her injuries included ribs that had pierced her lung, the sound she was making was one I will never forget. The EMS had to use the jaws of life to extricate her. She lived and recovered beautifully, we broke up a few years later, we remain buds to this day. I was 19 when this happened, I'm 41 now, I was never really the same again even after years of therapy. Edited, to remove typo. Summertime and I was sick. Had been stuffed up for a week. I start to feel better and I gotta visit my grandma to pick stuff up. So I offer to walk her dog for her to help out. Plus he's a cutie so I didn't mind. I'm walking the dog and I start coughing and hack up the biggest, thickest, greenest lung booger I've ever had. It had black specks in it, a bright green with clear surroundings, and sticky. I finally get this monster up and spit it out. I'm leaning on a fence cause of the coughing fit and I feel the dog pull at the leash a bit. I look up and he slurps up my booger like it's a fucking jello shot. But it was so big he has to chew it bit. I'm gagging writing this shit. Dog swallowed a booger the size of his fucking head. GG. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.